Okay, so get this. You send us a whole bunch of research on something unbelievable. The first ever detection of neutrinos inside the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC at CERN. It really is a landmark achievement. I was reading through all these articles and honestly, my mind was blown. Yeah, I can see why trillions of these tiny particles are passing through us every second, but they're practically impossible to catch. Right, it's like trying to snag a shadow. But now they've actually done it. They've managed to catch these ghost particles inside a particle collider. It's an incredible achievement. And it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for studying these enigmatic particles. So let's break this down. We're talking about two research collaborations, Phaser and SND at LHC, both working at the LHC, but they use different approaches, right? That's right. Both teams were really clever in how they designed and placed their detectors. Before we dive into those details, can you give us a quick refresher on why these neutrinos are such a big deal? I mean, to someone who's not a physicist, they might just sound like, well, another tiny particle. Neutrinos are way more than just another tiny particle. They're crucial for our understanding of the universe and the fundamental laws of physics. For one thing, they're incredibly abundant, second only to photons in the entire universe. Wow, and photons are light particles, right? So neutrinos are everywhere. Absolutely. Every single second, trillions and trillions of neutrinos are passing through you, me, and everything around us. They're produced in stars, supernovae, nuclear reactors, even the Earth itself. And we don't even notice. That's wild. Exactly. And that's what makes them so difficult to study. Neutrinos have no charge. They're unbelievably tiny, and they barely interact with matter. That's why they're nicknamed ghost particles. They can pass through entire planets as if they weren't even there. So we have these super abundant particles that are really hard to find, but they could hold the key to unlocking some big secrets of the universe. And now we've finally detected them inside the LHC. Precisely. That's why these discoveries are so groundbreaking. So remind us what the LHC actually is. I know it's a particle collider, but what does that even mean? Imagine a giant racetrack for subatomic particles. The LHC is this massive ring, 27 kilometers in circumference, buried underground near Geneva, Switzerland. Okay, I'm picturing a giant underground racetrack. Inside this racetrack, protons are accelerated to almost the speed of light and then smashed together. These collisions create a burst of energy and that energy can transform into new particles. So it's like smashing two cars together and then suddenly a bicycle appears out of the wreckage. Well, it's a bit more complicated than that, but the analogy works. That's how we discovered the Higgs boson back in 2012, for example. Right, the Higgs boson, the God particle. So if the LHC is producing all this energy and neutrinos are so abundant, why haven't we seen them there before? It all comes down to where the detectors were looking. See, previous detectors of the LHC had blind spots, right where these high energy neutrinos were most likely to be found. So it's not that the neutrinos weren't there, we just weren't looking in the right place. Precisely. And that's where Phaser and SND at LHC come in. They took different but equally ingenious approaches to overcome this challenge. All right, let's dive into Phaser first. What was their strategy? Phaser's approach was brilliantly simple. They placed their detector along the beam line directly in the path of the neutrinos. So they put their neutrino net right where the neutrinos were most likely to be. Seems pretty logical, but I imagine there were some technical hurdles. Oh, absolutely. First, they needed a detector that was sensitive enough to actually detect these elusive particles. They used what's called an emulsion detector. Imagine layers of photographic film, but instead of capturing light, it captures the tracks of particles. So when a neutrino passes through, it leaves a tiny trail like a microscopic footprint. Exactly. And by analyzing these tracks, they can identify the particle and its properties. So did this neutrino net actually catch anything? It did. In fact, they detected 153 neutrino interactions. And get this, at the highest energies ever recorded in a lab setting. 153. That's amazing. This must have huge implications for neutrino research, right? Absolutely. It means we can now study neutrinos in a whole new way at energy levels that were basically impossible to achieve in a lab before. I even have a quote here from Jonathan Feng, the co-spokesperson for Phaser. He said, previously, particle physics was thought to be divided into two parts, high energy experiments and high intensity experiments, which were required to study neutrinos. This work has shown that high energy experiments can also study neutrinos and so has brought together the high energy and high intensity frontiers. So it's like they've bridged a gap in particle physics research. It's a remarkable achievement. But Phaser wasn't the only team hunting for neutrinos at the LHC. Let's talk about SND at LHC and their unique approach. Okay, bring on SND at LHC. How did they go about this neutrino hunt? SND at LHC went for a detector that was specifically designed to detect neutrinos. 
Their detector is positioned in an area of the LHC that's known for its high neutrino flux, meaning lots of neutrinos are produced there. Sounds promising, but I'm guessing it wasn't that easy. You're right. Their detector's location, while rich in neutrinos, was also bombarded with debris from the proton collisions. It's like trying to hear a whisper in the middle of a rock concert. Wow, that's a tough challenge. What kind of noise were they dealing with? One of the biggest culprits was muons. They're like heavier, less stable cousins of electrons. And they were creating a lot of background noise that the SND at LHC team had to filter out. So how did they manage to hear the neutrinos over all that racket? They developed some incredibly sophisticated techniques to distinguish the signal of a neutrino interaction from all that background noise. It was a monumental task. And did they succeed? Were they able to actually detect neutrinos? They did. Despite the immense challenge, SND at LEC managed to detect eight neutrino events. Eight events? That's incredible considering the rock concert they were dealing with. Exactly. And remember, each of those events represents a neutrino actually interacting with their detector, a really rare occurrence. I have a quote here from Christo Valvilela, a researcher on the SND at LHC team. He said, The observation of collider neutrinos opens the door to novel measurements, which will help us understand some of the more fundamental puzzles of the standard model of particle physics, such as why there are three generations of matter particles, fermions, that seem to be exact copies of each other in all aspects except for their mass. Okay, so this isn't just about finding neutrinos, it's about using them to probe the fundamental laws of physics, like why some particles have mass and others don't. Exactly. Neutrinos could hold the key to solving some of the biggest mysteries in particle physics. So we've seen how both FASR and SND at LHC achieved these groundbreaking detections. What's next for them? What's on the horizon? Both collaborations are eager to collect more data and refine their techniques. Phaser is also working on a new facility called the Forward Physics Facility, which will be even more specialized for studying neutrinos and other elusive particles. Sounds like this is just the beginning of a whole new chapter in neutrino research. It is. And what's really fascinating is that these discoveries at the LHC have implications that go way beyond particle physics. Oh, how so? Well, if we could detect neutrinos inside the controlled environment of the LHC, Imagine what we could learn by studying neutrinos that come from space. Neutrinos from space? Is that even possible? It's not only possible, it's already happening. There are neutrino telescopes all around the world that are detecting neutrinos coming from outside our galaxy. Whoa, hold on. So we're not just talking about neutrinos from the sun. We're talking about neutrinos from distant stars and galaxies. Exactly. And these cosmic neutrinos can tell us incredible things about the universe. Like what? Why are these space neutrinos so special? Well, for one thing, they can travel these huge cosmic distances without being absorbed or deflected by magnetic fields, unlike light or other charged particles. So they're like tiny cosmic messengers carrying information from the far reaches of the universe. Exactly. And because they come from some of the most extreme environments in the cosmos, like supernovae and active galactic nuclei, they can give us unique insights into these phenomena. It's like having a direct line to these incredible events. Exactly. By studying cosmic neutrinos, we can learn about what's happening inside exploding stars, the environments around supermassive black holes, and maybe even the nature of dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy. Now we're talking about some seriously big questions, but how do we actually detect these cosmic neutrinos? I mean, the LHC is this massive complex machine. Surely we can't just build another one in space. Uh-huh, no, we don't need to build an LHC in space. There are other ways to detect cosmic neutrinos. Okay, I'm all ears. How does it work? One famous example is the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory. It's located in Antarctica. Antarctica? Why Antarctica? Ice Cube uses a cubic kilometer of ice at the South Pole as its detector. The ice acts like a giant filter. It allows these neutrinos to pass through while absorbing other particles. So we're using the Earth itself as a giant neutrino detector? In a way, yes. And it's surprisingly effective. When a neutrino interacts with the ice, it produces a faint flash of light. And that light is detected by thousands of light sensors buried deep in the ice. Wow, that's amazing. So what kind of things has Ice Cube discovered? Ice Cube has already detected neutrinos from outside our galaxy. It's giving us a glimpse into the high energy universe. And it's helping us understand where these cosmic neutrinos are coming from and what creates them. So we have these incredible detectors at the LHC showing us what's possible. Yeah. And we have neutrino telescopes like Ice Cube peering into the depths of the cosmos. It really is an exciting time for neutrino research. With all the advancements in detector technology and the construction of new and bigger neutrino telescopes, 
We're about to make some major breakthroughs in our understanding of neutrinos and the universe they reveal. It's like having a whole new way of looking at the universe. Precisely. And with each new discovery, we get closer to answering some of the biggest questions about the cosmos, like the nature of dark matter and dark energy. It's mind-blowing to think that these tiny, practically undetectable particles could be the key to understanding some of the biggest mysteries in physics. It really shows how everything in the universe is connected. From the tiniest subatomic particles to the largest structures in the cosmos, it's all linked together in ways we're only just beginning to understand. Makes you wonder what other surprises are out there, what these little ghost particles might have in store for us. Well, I'm certain there are many more secrets to discover. One thing that really struck me in all this is the ingenuity and sheer determination of these scientists. It really is inspiring. I mean, think about the challenges they faced trying to find these tiny, barely there particles in a sea of other particles and noise. Yeah, it's a testament to human ingenuity and our endless curiosity. It's not even just about the technology. It's the collaboration, the teamwork, the global effort that goes into this kind of work. Absolutely. Science transcends borders. It brings people together from all corners of the world working toward a common goal, to push the limits of what we know. It's a good reminder that even in a world that can feel divided, we still have this desire to explore and understand the universe around us. It really is. And that's what makes all of this so exciting. It's a journey of discovery and we're all on it together. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today, from those neutrino detections at the LHC, to the incredible potential of neutrino astronomy, to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. It's been a fascinating deep dive. And it's definitely left me with a sense of awe at the vastness and complexity of the universe. That's the beauty of science. It reminds us that there's always more to learn and discover. So to our listener, as you're going about your day, just remember that trillions of neutrinos are passing through you every second. Messengers from the furthest reaches of the universe, carrying stories of exploding stars, colliding galaxies, and maybe even hints of the unknown. Keep looking up. Keep asking questions. And never lose that sense of wonder about the world around us. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll be the one making those groundbreaking discoveries, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge even further. 